By the time Hitler came to power in 1933, his thoughts on the future of armoured warfare had already been widely published in the Nazi press. He had a keen interest in the tank and placed its development high on his list of priorities. When German rearmament began in earnest, plans were made to produce an entire range of armoured fighting vehicles. This was based largely on the philosophies of Heinz Guderian, a veteran of the First World War and chief of staff to the inspector of motorised troops. Guderian had long since recognised the full potential of the tank. If allowed to operate at its own speed, instead of being hindered by the slowness of the troops, the tank could provide the ideal means of avoiding static trench warfare. In a series of exercises and motorised war games, Guderian had demonstrated that mobile armoured divisions could win a modern war in the shortest possible time. Two main types of tank were envisaged by the German general staff. The first was a light tank, which would carry a 37mm high-velocity anti-tank gun and would be deployed in large numbers to form the bulk of an armoured assault. The second type would be a medium tank, weighing some 20 tonnes. Equipped with the larger 75mm gun, firing high explosive shells, it would act in support of the lighter vehicle. The Panzer III and Panzer IV would eventually fulfil these two roles, but their development and production took much longer than expected. In the meantime, two small, lighter tanks were used to fill the gap. These were the 5.5-ton Panzer I and the 10-ton Panzer II. 